Okay, so now that we've got our one point down, we're going to go to, we're going to do a two point. And I already have that armature set up for us. Let's go ahead and, and zoom in to the building. And our two point is going to happen for, as an interior, interior view. And if we want to look at what we're going to try to capture, we're going for this one right here. So we're up high and we're looking out across the gallery. So here you can see the steps leading down to the pocket galleries at the perimeter of the building, as well as the, the main floor below. Okay, so the first step is to, if you don't have it already, is to build that armature. And what I'm talking about is this little, this line here with the point at the top. And what that is, is a five foot line. So that represents somebody, a person, and the point on top represents a camera location. And then this point right over here out in the middle of the space is another point that's been copied over there at the same height. So the camera remains level and that's where the camera will look. So here is gonna be the camera and here is gonna be the target, okay? And then that will be our starting position. So let's do that. We're gonna right click, go to set camera and in the sub menu, we're going to say place camera and target. First, it's going to ask for the camera location, which is the eye of the person. And then it's going to ask for the target, which is out in the space, level with the eye. And now we are viewing out into the gallery and we know what view we have acquired. Now, again, now that we've set this view, any additional changes that we make, we want to make sure that we make those changes through camera manipulations in plan and elevation, not in, in our perspective view. So I'm gonna to go to the top view and make sure that we still have our camera turned on. There it is, here it is. And we can go ahead and move this camera around to get a view that's a little bit more like this. So you can see I have to move over to the right. I have to look over to the left a little bit more. So let's do that. So first thing I'm going to do is turn off. I'm going to disable my snaps so I don't accidentally snap one of these points to something that I don't want to. And then I can go ahead and click on the camera point. And it's good to note that you can only move the point. You can only move a point. You cannot rotate a point. So, but you move it in order to get rotation. I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to go ahead and move this and watch what happens in our perspective view. I'm swinging that camera around and I'm bringing that view to more of what I want. So I can change my station point or my camera, and I can also change my camera target point in the same manner. And I can also move the entire camera together if I wanna move in, over to the side, out, so forth. Okay. And now I have a view that's a little bit more like what I want to achieve. Although I can get a little closer than that. Let's do that. And then also 
we can't forget our lens length. So I think the lens length, if we click on our perspective viewport, our lens length is still at 24, but I think that the lens length should be even smaller. We get an even wider view of this space. And also I think we should change the um, kind of aspect ratio of the frame, change the size of the frame. So this is a, this is a portrait view. And we can get a similar perspective as, or similar frame size is what we, what we're going for here. And now we're, now we can see that we're getting pretty close, right? And actually maybe I won't even change my, my lens length. I'll just keep it at 24. But you could see, for example, if I put this at 10, you get a much wider cone of vision. Yeah, so I'm going to move that back to 24. And I just need to include a little bit more of this wall over here that I'm missing. So I'm, I'm just going to pivot around a little bit more. And I'm going to do that by selecting the camera and just turning, 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 maybe something like that. Referencing my I'm feeling pretty good about that. I'm liking this. I'm liking that composition. And I can compare it to my frame down here. Pretty close. Now, one thing that you might notice right away is that in the scene, in, in the Make 2D that I already captured, as well as the, the, the composition that I'm currently working on, both have a lot more roof than what the photograph has. And you can also note that the verticals in the photo are not vertical, they're diverging, right? So they're skewed at the top outward and so what that what what that's telling us is that this is a three-point perspective this photograph represents a three-point perspective so what we need to do in order to achieve a three-point perspective is to tilt the camera in elevation so that we're looking down into that space. And in order to do that, it's pretty simple. We can, go, we can go in our front view and choose, actually it might be easier to choose the camera in the top view and then move it in front view. I'm gonna just bring, well, actually, I'm going to change the camera target point. I'm going to move it down. Now watch what happens in the perspective viewport. You see how that skew, how those verticals are skewing a little bit. And then when I move my camera forward, I can start to see down into that space a little bit more. So this person is standing at the top of the stairs, looking down into that space a bit. And I'm feeling pretty good about that. Let's go over to our scene. You know, this person, might be a little bit taller than, than my person is. And that's why they're seeing a little bit more into this space right here. But other than that, it's pretty good. The ridge is aligned. We have less 
ceiling in the view and the stairs have a similar amount, similar shape. So it's from here, it's the same process as in the one point perspective, you want to save that view and then you want to make 2D of that view. I've already done that. So I'm going to go ahead and just skip right to the, the make 2D of that scene. And it's important to note if I want to add people to this scene, like how I did in the one point perspective, it's a little trickier because they're on lower levels. It's not a level playing, it's not a level um, floor, right? It's, it sinks as you get into that space. So the people are not gonna be, their heads are not gonna be aligned with the horizon because they are lower than I am. So in order to really get that accurate, what you probably wanna do is add some little, little scaffolds into the scene to help guide you scale the people. And what I mean by that is that you probably want to go into the digital model. And I'm going to get my view back in a minute, get into the digital model and copy <laughs> Oh, I have my snaps disabled and copy this. Oops. I'm going to copy this curve into a couple different places so that I know how to place people. So I'm going to copy it there as well as there and then I'll move it more or less into the center I'll pull this out as well so now if I update that scene if I go over here to my my named views and or not update but reload that scene, I can see how big to make someone within that scene. And then you can just delete that line out in the make 2D when you're done. Also, it's good to note that this point out here in the space that was our original target point, and that is that represents the horizon marker. So that is where the horizon is, and I've added it here in this scene. Just for reference, like, for example, if you wanted to add someone in the foreground, you could do that and you can put their eyes through the horizon to kind of help frame frame the scene, maybe. Okay, and lastly, the, what I would like you all to work on now is to frame the final scene in the way that I've shown you and go ahead and make 2D of that scene here and add some people to it. <laughs> 